So you've obviously already uh, crossed mushrooms before. Could you explain a little bit how that process works as far as trying to cross mushrooms? Okay. Um, I can give you a quick overview. Um, if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah, the Smash Tech video that I have goes over a little bit more in depth, um, but pretty much you isolate out single spores from your two parent mushrooms, and then you germinate out monokaryotic mycelium from those, and then those are what you use to try and cross with each other. Um, so yeah, it's just the process that makes it difficult. It's just isolating out the single spores so that you can get monokaryotic cultures going. Now, have you tried to cross mushroom before and it hasn't worked out? Yes, I've done zero dilution before. What is uh, that? That is when you mix up spores into a sterile water solution, and then you dilute it down to try and get like this solution that has like maybe 10 spores inside of it. And then you would run that out on an agar plate, and hopefully you can germinate or find you can germinate one spore um, and, oh. then collect its, and then collect its mycelium. That's the first I ever heard of that. I think more or less, uh, it, it's just a lot of patience and a lot of agar plates you're going to have to go through to try and do it. And then going through to confirm you've got monokaryotic kosher, now you got to do work underneath the microscope. So Oh, I see. It's, it's a lot of work to cross. That's why you don't see that many people doing it in this hobby, because it's just a lot of effort to do it. I mean, a lot of people have come a long way to try and simplify things down um, to make it easier. So there's content creators out there to, to do that, too. I imagine that's gonna that got to be a lengthy process. It can't be done like very simply. I, I imagine it could be, but either way, you're gonna be going through a lot of agar plates to, to, and messing around with the microscope to to try and confirm you've got monokaryotic culture. So, oh wow, that's pretty cool. Now going forward in the future, if you could put on your, you know, I like your hat that you're wearing. All you need is a crystal ball. But if you uh, <laughs> if you had a crystal ball. How do you think fungi is going to be used in the future? Like as far as like medicine, uh, sustainability, food, uh, as I've been doing research, I've noticed that they've been using mushrooms for a lot of different products now. Yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of research to be done about mushrooms. There, there's a lot about it that we don't understand or, or we don't quite know. That's for sure. So there's, there's always new studies being found. Um, I don't know if you've heard recently. Uh, but they've I've heard somewhere that they've been able to grow a uh, mushroom that can be grown inside like a cubensis, um, but it produces uh, muscomo, which is the uh, active compound in the uh, fly agaric, the uh, the red and white mushroom that you see in my background here. Right, right, um, right. Yeah. So you, you can cultivate that um, active compound there. Really? Yeah. Man, mushrooms are. It's a trip. <laughs> it's like yeah, with uh, mushrooms, the more and more I learn, it's like the the more and more you learn, the more you realize you got more to learn. Yeah, there, there's a, there's lots of new species still being discovered. But sometimes yeah. I get questions on some videos. You're not a rookie anymore. I'm like, man, I'm still a rookie. I I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to figure it out. You know. Um. Do you know Alan Rockefeller? Yes. Well, I don't. I mean, I don't know him personally, but I know who he is. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he's he's been doing it for a very long time. Uh, if you go if you go to his iNaturalist page, which is like a, like a little community for people that are into foraging, okay, uh, he's probably discovered like thousands and thousands of IDs on on different mushrooms. Wow, um, on, on there, and he's just posts all the stuff that he's found and done research into. It. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, he's done. 300 something thousand identifications of mushrooms across that the is crazy. Um, 300,000, yeah. And if you look at his calendar, you can see all the days that he went out and did um foraging at mushrooms on his calendar, like it tracks it. It's wild, <laughs> he's the real deal right there, yeah, for sure. Do you have any books, films, anything that you like that people could watch or listen to that you like dealing with mycology? Um, uh, yeah, actually, um, for documentaries, I would recommend people to check out Fantastic Fungi. Oh, is that on Netflix? Yeah, it is. I've seen, uh, I think they got different episodes, right? I think I've seen the first episode. Um, no, it was actually just one movie. Um, oh, it's just one, oh, it's one long movie. Okay. That wasn't the yeah. series then. I believe I've watched yeah. the first part of that. Cause I remember seeing that, that thumbnail on Netflix. But yeah, that, that's a good one. Um, so that that goes more in depth about like the mental health aspects of of mushrooms and and that. Um, there's also how to change your mind on Netflix. That's also um, a good one. Um, I think it's 
it's from based off of Michael Pollan's book, um, but I think on Netflix it's called How I Change Your Minds. That's that's another one. He has some well. good interviews, Michael Pollan. He has some good interviews. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of mycology show, um, Common Side Effects is one I would recommend anyone into mycology to check out. I haven't um, seen that one. Where is that Common Side Effects? Is that on Netflix too? No, it's on Adult Swim. Adult Swim. Um, so you know the guys that did uh, King of the Hill and Beavis and Butthead, Mike Judge. Yeah, yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. Mike Judge um, and all that. Yep. Yeah, so he's he created the show Common Side Effects, and it's about this guy that's a mycologist, and he um, found this mushroom that supposedly cures you of all ailments. And um, there's pharmaceutical companies that are trying to go after him um, and trying to like steal this mushroom and like profit off of it and whatnot. It's, it's a crazy show. Uh, it's hilarious too. Uh, but it, it's, it's called Common Side Effects. Yes. On Adult yeah. Swim. Yeah. Hey, you guys. Yeah. I'm gonna check it out. And Mike Judge is in there too. Like he voices in there. Like it's, it's crazy hearing the guy sounds like Hank Hill, just kind of like <laughs> going <laughs> off about like mushrooms and whatnot. Why is Hank um, Hill talking about mushrooms? Uh, but yeah, great show. I loved it. I'm, I can't wait for season two to come out. If you guys have watched any of my previous content, then you know how much I love the North Sport products. If you guys want to get any of the great North Sport products for yourself, use the code Base Drop Keys. That will save you 10% off any order at Norsport.com. That's awesome. Getting down here to the end of the podcast. And what I like to do right now is I like to go through some quick fire questions with you. Just answer them. First thing that you think of, it's all good. Foraging or farming? Which one do you prefer? Foraging or farming mushrooms? Yes, sir. Foraging. Foraging. Okay. Any reason why? Because you never know what the heck you're going to find. Uh, when you're farming, you're always growing the same stuff over and over. Yeah, good reason. Okay. Cooked, dried, or raw? How do you like to consume your mushrooms? Cooked, please. Cooked. Uh, preference on, on which ones? Well, you said morels earlier. Favorite. Yeah. And you would you fry them or? Yeah, I would fry them. Um, I, would pers I personally like to... Um, stuff them with cream cheese and then wrap them with bacon. That um, sounds good. And make them into like morel poppers. Oh, that sounds really good. Yeah. You bake them. Oh my God. They're so good. That might be something I could do on YouTube right there. There we go. What do you think the most underrated mushroom is? Most underrated mushroom? Underrated. When it don't get a lot of, you know, uh, sh spotlight, but you think it's a great mushroom? Probably the bleeding tooth fungus. Oh, I did a. I seen that on uh, Google. Yeah, yeah. I would say that one's pretty underrated. Not a lot of people know about that or give a love. Oh, another one is the uh, dead man's fingers. Dead man's fingers. I did a post about that as well. And the crazy, it looks like as we're talking about this too, guys. I'll put pictures up so you can see what we're talking about. Dead man's fingers has that name for a reason. It looks like dead man's fingers. It's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. Definitely underrated for sure. And the bleeding and, tooth, when it looks like it's bleeding, it's so crazy. We'll put pictures up for you. Yeah, um, I would say another underrated one. I don't know, maybe it's a little bit rated. <laughs> Not as underrated, but Boletus mushrooms. Um, they're like a family of mushrooms that you can find all around that um, kind of look similar to each other. And some of them are really edible, and some of them are really good tasting, too. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, Boletus is a genus, and there's like over like a different 100 different like Boletuses that are out there. Um, and they all look different. Now, a minute ago, you were talking about the stuffed mushrooms with the bacon. Yeah, is that your grow. favorite dish that has mushrooms in it, or is there another favorite dish that you have? Um, another one that I like doing is lion's mane crab cakes. Okay, well, I'm allergic to seafood, but that does sound good. Lion's mane part. Well, then you can replace the seafood with lion's mane, and then you can have lion's mane crab cake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so your lion's mane crab cake doesn't have any crab in it? Well, I personally put crab in my lion's mane crab cake. I just use the lion's mane to, as an additional filler. Filler, right. Mm -hmm. Because crab is expensive. Yeah. That's what they say. That I don't have so, to buy any. So, yeah, that that's why lion's mane crab cakes are so good because like, I get like a big fat lion's mane or crab cake pretty much and I only have to use like half the crab. Oh, I got you. Lion's mane filling the rest for you. Yeah, yeah, and it absorbs the flavor of the crab, and the texture matches well with it. It's just, it's just, it just works out so well. Are you? Uh, what do you? What's your thoughts on mushroom tea? I see a lot of advertisements for mushroom tea now. I think the, I, I like them. I don't see anything wrong with them. 
I mean, if you like mushrooms and you like the way they taste, you want to have the tea, like, go for it. I mean, there's health benefits there that can be had. Um, or, you know, I would say if you're not into the taste and you're trying to get it for the benefits, maybe it might be a little bit of placebo. I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, mushrooms work differently for everybody. So it's like a try it, see if you like it, you know, move on from there. Uh, but as far as the, the mushroom tea idea, you've taken mushroom tea before, obviously? Yes, I have. How how do you like to make it? Or do you have you made it or did somebody else make it for you? No, I make it. I DIY myself. <laughs> um, I don't know. You might, you could, your wife could have made it for you. You know what I mean? Um, no, it's, I just ground up some mushrooms or and then I'll steep them in um, simmering water. Like I'll heat up a pot of water. Like I'll, pour right. out a cup, I'll measure out a cup of how much tea I want to drink first. And then I'll pour that into the pan and I'll just start heating it up until it boils. And then I'll lower the heat down to a simmer and then I'll throw my mushroom in there and i let it simmer for like 15 20 minutes and then after that i can strain the bits if i want to or i'll just have it with the bits sometimes and then i right. add in a spoonful of honey in there um and you can squeeze in some lemon juice if you wanted to um and yeah you can just have it to tea like that i personally just like it as it is with the honey by itself mushroom tea and honey okay um, that's good enough for me you got, you got any thoughts on truffles you think they're overrated the people are like really into truffles. I think they're amazing. I, I think they, they have a fantastic smell and flavor to them. Um, especially if you've had like the authentic truffles where you, you get slices of it. Mm -hmm. um, the smell of it is much more pungent than uh, what you find typically in like the supposed like truffle oil products that you have here in America. It seem to be very, very popular. You know, they got like truffle butter and different truffle products now. Yeah. I mean, if you like, if you, if you ever, have you ever had truffle? Uh, one time, one time. What did you think of it? I liked it myself. Okay, then I think you would probably like more more truffle if you were offered it. It's just very hard to find. Um, right. so, kind of expensive, if, huh? I, I mean, I've had them at Michael Fest. If you come out to Michael Fest, uh, Michael you, Fest, you, right? Okay, you, you, you get the charm. I had them from uh, William Padilla Brown. Um, he's hey, William Padilla Brown. I know exactly who that is. Yep. Yeah, he's the host. Oh, you know him? You gotta come out here. Well, I, mean, I don't know him personally, but I know who he is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, he probably loved to, to see you at the uh, Michael Fest too. If you can, when is Michael Fest? Uh, happens in August every year. In August, okay. Like the first the first weekend of August. Next Michael Fest, I'm there. I have to definitely come August. That's great. So it just happened then. Yes, it just did happen. Yeah, I, I was I went camping there three days. Oh, I bet you love that. I did. <laughs> it was amazing, to be honest. Uh, the people there, the getting to connect with people, seeing all the people into mushrooms, um, and then getting to experience it there too. In a way, it's kind of like yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm into it. Next, next Michael Fest, I'm going for sure. That'd be cool. I do want to invite you guys to come subscribe to my website, BassDropKeys.tv. On here, what you're getting is the edited version of the pod. If you want the full conversation, also I do spend. 15 to 30 minutes with each guest. Come over and subscribe to my website, BassDropKeys.tv. The RookieMycologist.com is for the merch, for the videos, BassDropKeys.tv.